A Vineyard family, we're so glad you've joined us on this Wednesday night at our midweek um, check-in. We just uh, we want to start by singing together, by worshiping together. Um, in a moment, we're going to talk about what it means to just trust God. And so as we do that, um, I'm sure you're like me, that you're working through a lot of different things in your own life. And so um, there's an invitation tonight that we would trust God more deeply trust in the presence of God that walks with us. And so let's sing together. Father of heavenly light, fount of wisdom and love, always laid bare in your sight, you know my way. I believe you will provide all I need in my life. I will not fear anymore, for I will never trust you, Jesus. Trust you. Trust you in my life. Hold the world. You hold the world in your hand. God of mercy and might. You do me before I was born. You call me by name. How could I ever respond but to fall and adore? I live to know you more, Lord, I will ever trust you, Jesus, trust you. the wise trust in the wisdom let not the strong boast in their mind let not the rich glory in riches I will trust you let not the wise trust in the wisdom let not the strong Boast in their might, let not the rich glory in riches. I will ever trust you, Jesus. Trust you, Jesus. Trust you. think now where is that space that God is inviting you to trust and reflect ask God for courage and know that God is with you
say thank you, Ethan, um, for leading that, but couldn't you find a, a song that's not quite so gut-wrenchingly honest, and <laughs> I, mean, I just wanted to, you know, <laughs> you know, trust, I love preaching about faith and about trust, I love to tell people that's what you need to do, but I think the hardest thing about trusting God is it's those moments when you actually have nothing else you can do. It's pretty hard, isn't it? Because it hits you right where you live and there's nothing you can do except trust that God is good and God is love and while he doesn't control every moment of every day every detail of our lives he is so good that he does take care of us ultimately he does win love wins in the end may God bless you tonight me and others that come to your mind as we pray. May God bless us with the ability to trust, to place whatever it is that is in our hands that we have been trusting, that perhaps is being yanked from us in these moments. May we put those things in the hands of God and believe that in his hands, everything is really safe. May God grant us courage to really, really trust him. May God grant us eyes to see by the spirit what he's doing, where he's working in the middle of situations that just seem impossible. And may we have the wisdom to take each one of those things as a token from God that yes, he's at work. And no, he hasn't forgotten. And somehow, some way, everything will be all right in Christ. May we have God's grace upon us to, to live with momentary light affliction, knowing that one day it will give way to the glory and the goodness of God and his ultimate restoration of all things. Ultimately, 
We trust you, God, to do all of that. And then to give us grace one day at a time as we live through those moments where we have nothing but trust. We bless you, Lord. We thank you for who you are. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, we pray. Amen. So actually, thank you, Ethan. <laughs> A very honest and needed song tonight, <clears throat> I think, for lots of folks. Well, guys, gals, this is our midweek update, and that's pretty much what it is this week, is an update. Um, and so, if I can change gears a little bit, here's the update from the world of sports. The New Orleans Saints just got a contract for one year with Jameis Winston, the ex-quarterback of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers that none of us really did like. But now he's a who dad. He's trying to learn how to say it. We're going to have to get adjusted. He'll probably stay third string, but that's okay. I mean, we need a, we need a third string. Anyway, well, that felt better, didn't it? <laughs> We're at seven weeks of shelter in place. Seven weeks of non-essential businesses being closed, public gatherings banned, social distancing. Nobody even knew that word before, but now it's, it's essential in public places, and pretty soon we're all going to be wearing masks and gloves, I understand. Washing our hands repeatedly still. When do I get to take a shower? I've been washing my hands for seven weeks. I mean, will somebody please give the release? Let us take a shower. I mean, that would be so helpful. Well, evidently that comes on May 15th. We'll see. So you saw the news press uh, news conference yesterday. Governor John Bell Edwards extended shelter in place until May 15th, another two weeks. And his decision, I don't know if you keep up with social media much, but his decision has been met with a lot of resistance, a lot of complaining. And uh, many are just so disappointed because they're just weary. They're weary and, and uh, of, of imposed isolation. Now, some folks obviously... As we've said many times before, some suffer a lot more through this because they've actually had loved ones who were sick with the virus. And some folks in our church actually had the virus. That's, not, that's nothing to, um, that's, that's serious stuff right there. Most of us have been so inconvenienced and, and the imposed isolation is beginning to wear on some people because people are hitting a wall now. I mean, how long can you keep doing the same things? There are a lot of unintended consequences of the shelter in place policies. People are on the edge. My guess is if Jesus was quarantined with his brothers, he'd probably be weary of them by now as well. So give yourself a break. Some folks are struggling with different kinds of things. You know, there is an element, and I've heard from several single folks, an element of loneliness. If you're not going somewhere to work and you're home all the time by yourself, that's serious stuff. Depression. Some marriages are really, people in their marriage relationships are struggling because they were struggling before and now they're spending a lot more time together. And, and while it could be good and they could be resolving things, some don't have the skills for that. And so they find themselves in more trouble. Some business owners, it's crunch time. And I understand they want to make this go away because pretty soon there, there, there seems to be a tipping point when they'll decide I'm not going to be able to open my business again. Um, there have been so many other things. Uh, I think some of you, some who are small business owners, have missed out on the payroll protection plan, at least the first round. And, and then you read that the L.A. Lakers, they qualified. I mean, go figure that one out. Well, they did give the money back. I heard they gave the $5 million back to the government. So good grief. And, and all this boils to a point where uh, now you're seeing protests and you're hearing conspiracy theories about the whole thing that it's all just a hoax. Listen, I totally understand all of that because these kinds of things are incredibly frustrating. So tonight, here's what I want to do in the little midweek update. I want to try to be a voice of reason. And if you watch much television, you don't find a lot of voices of reason. Well, except Dr. Anthony Fauci, Dr. Burks. Actually, John Bell Edwards has been quite a voice of reason. I'm very impressed with our governor. 
Um, didn't vote for him, but might next time. So I want to be a steady, calm voice tonight and try to try to help with some things. So let me let me say this first. If this extended shelter in place order causes you difficulty with finances or feeding your family, listen very carefully. Help is available. Now, there, there's the normal help that you think about. I think unemployment benefits, benefits are on steroids right now. They've been amped up, and I know that's helped a lot of you because I've talked to some of you. It's been helpful to many. However, some of you just still need financial assistance. You've got bills you can't pay. I'm asking you to fill out the forms online at uh, vcno.org. Is that our website? Is that vcno.org? Yeah, I watch it all the time. Anyway, um, help's available. Fill the form out, and, and one of our pastors will call you. We have some generous folks who, who we put some money aside, and we're, we're able to help. I mean, it's limited funding, but if you need it, call us. I mean, there's care available there. There's help for you if you need the financial assistance. If you need food, we're having more food come through this place than we've had since Katrina, and it's available. So if you have needs to feed your family, if you need food or your financial assistance, fill out the form, do whatever you need to do to get in touch with us, and we will do what we can to help you. Secondly, if this extended shelter in place is beginning to wear on you emotionally, mentally, spiritually, Help is available. I mean, this is our church family. I feel like when I'm, when I'm talking to this camera, I'm, you know, I'm getting used to it. I, I know I'm talking to you. It's our church family. And there is help available. Listen, first of all, you, some of your doctors are opening up. Go see your doctor. Do what you have to do to take care of yourself. Get your medications. But secondly, pastors are available. And if you just let us know somehow online, vcno.org, what your needs are, we're actually working on ways to provide additional pastoral care. Uh, we don't know if it's all going to be uh, through Zoom or FaceTime or, or phone calls, whatever, but we have pastors available, and we just, we just want you to get the help you need. In the next few weeks, we'll be having a meeting on this tomorrow. I think if your marriages are in trouble, our marriage ministry was going to kick in. We'll have some mentors available. You won't be able to be face-to-face, -face, but you can be at least like we are here. Um, if you're struggling with addictions, same thing. Some of you haven't been able to go to a recovery class in a long time or an AA group. Listen, please let us know. We will put somebody with you. We'll help you in any way that we can. But here's the deal. We can't help you if we don't hear from you. So you may be a little hesitant to call or to fill out a form, but it's your family. We're here to help and let us help you if we can. All right, well, let's talk for a few, few minutes about the governor's order this week. First question, who wants to be the governor? <laughs> Nobody, you know, because you can't make a right decision. You make a decision and you, at least half the people you're going to alienate right out of the gate. Making judgment calls for myself is not a problem. If I'm making a judgment call for my family, no problem. They'll follow me. Here we go. But what about when you're trying to make a judgment call for 4.6 million Louisianians? I mean, that's... A lot to consider, don't you think? It's a lot to think about. So much to consider with that many people being affected, not only by the virus, but whatever decisions you make to try to combat it. If I understand the facts correctly, folks, the governor doesn't have a whole lot of choice. The federal government has issued these gating criteria, and if you haven't looked at that, you probably should. Uh, the gating criteria for entering phase one of a relaunching uh, America, uh, and then phase two, and then phase three. Each phase takes 14 days, and you have to meet certain criteria. And the simple fact is Louisiana doesn't meet it yet. We're getting close. Obviously, the governor thinks by the 15th we'll be there. But we're not there yet. Now, regionally, one of my questions was, well, why can't you open up some regions that aren't as, as affected? Maybe that uh, region, maybe it's... Uh, I don't know, Washington Parish might be like, you know, pristine. It might be great. Well, I don't know why not, but they didn't do it that way. They're doing it by state, the entire state. So if they decide to do it regionally, guess what? Orleans, Jefferson, St. Tammany, St. Charles, St. John, we would all still be under it because we're the worst hit. And we know why, because we love Mardi Gras. 
We're the only city that had 1.4 million people visiting in the month of February. And that obviously played into the enlargement of this problem here. So here's the thing. We can have an opinion, we can voice our opinion, and we can vote for somebody else next time if we want to. But good citizens follow what the leaders are putting out there, unless they're asking us to do something that is against what God has asked us to do. In the last I checked, God wants us to be good citizens of whatever country we live in. So in my mind, we really don't have any choice. If they extend self-shelter in place two more weeks, then we need to shelter in place two more weeks. Just do what's being asked, and hopefully by May 15th, maybe we meet the criteria and we enter phase one. Now to get to phase two, guess what? Whatever restrictions are put on us at phase one, we'll have to go through that for 14 days and pass that criteria again before we get to phase three. And then we'll have to go another 14 days and pass the criteria again. And when you're in phase three, well actually, if I read this correctly, even they're expecting that once a, a community gets to phase three, it'll probably take another six weeks before we get to any real sense of normalcy, whatever that is. So I want to encourage you with a couple of things. Don't lose hope. It will slowly come to an end. Some changes may come as soon as two weeks from now. So you know what? Hold on to hope. Keep doing what you're doing. You can't really change it. So just don't lose your hope. Hang on to hope. And secondly, try to be patient. Relax. Chill. Oh, that's so 80s, isn't it? Was chill in the 80s? You, you weren't even born in the 80s, were you? I'm sorry, excuse me. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, forget it. Don't be anxious. Be patient. Do something different. Say, oh, there's nothing to do. I know. Hey, get outside. You can at least get outside now. The weather's been, haven't we been grateful for the good weather? Get some vitamin D. It'll make you feel better. Just get outside. Walk, bike, run, sit. Whatever. Just get outside. Do something. Change your scenery. Change it safely. It'll help, it'll help you develop some patience because it well, it's just good for you. A little diversion, a little distraction goes a long way. And then thirdly, just, just focus on what you can do. Don't focus on what you can't do. You know what we're doing this Friday night? It's called Jazz Fest on David. That's my street. My neighbors are going to come out. It's sort of a version of drinks in the driveway, except we'll all be in our own driveways. And we're bringing in a musician to sit in my driveway and he's just going to play music. We're having Jazz Fest. It is Jazz Fest weekend, right? So on Friday night, we're going to have Jazz Fest on David. A diversion, a distraction. It's all going to be safe. You know what? You can do those kinds of things. Do drive-by meetings. You know what? You can't do sit-downs. But I've just discovered this with, with my son, Brian. We've been going over to his house and we just lower my lift gate in the back. I sit in the back of the truck. They sit on the porch and we talk a little bit. You, that has been absolutely wonderful. Just to lay eyes on each other and talk a little bit. Do something. See, I can control that. That's something I can do without being unsafe. That's better than focusing all the things I can't do yet. So anyway, hope, patience, and focus. Hang in there couple more weeks and you'll start seeing, hopefully we'll start seeing some small changes. I'm personally ready for the staff to be back after March 15th. I mean, Zoom calls, are you guys been on Zoom calls? They're interesting. They're not exactly face to face. I mean, cause nobody knows if you're really wearing pants or not. I mean, it's just crazy. But anyway, do Zoom calls, do FaceTime, do something to catch up with people. That would be helpful. Our staff is doing Zoom calls. We're working from home and, and every now and then come into the office for just a few minutes to pick something up. We're not staying here very long. And we're trying to spend our time connecting and caring for people. It's been very difficult this way. Hopefully May 15th, some things will change. I do want to mention that uh, we're in discussions about bringing church back. Um, 
Now, I failed at bringing sexy back, so I'm not sure how bringing church back is going to go. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've been, I've been inside all day today. Can you tell? Okay. Um, uh, did I just really do that? I did that. Yeah, I did. Okay. It's live too, right? Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was so professional. <clears throat> all right. We're in discussions about how to bring church back. And folks, we have a lot to discuss. I mean, you know that a lot of events uh, have been canceled already and, and, and they needed to be. And now we're starting to look as we move closer to a phase one, two, three, how we're going to relaunch. I can tell you this. And, and I don't want to upset you with this, but um, I think it's the wise move. We'll be talking some more, and I'll give you more information when we have it. But we're not planning in-person gatherings for the month of May, for sure. It's too quick. Uh, I, I see it perhaps in June. <clears throat> but with all those restrictions for the gating criteria, and then how many people you can have in a gathering, I mean, if, if I'm honest about it, it could be July. Uh, before we actually meet in person. There are a lot of considerations that you may not think about and we're going to have to think about. Most churches, uh, 49 to 50% of the members are 55 years old and older, and that's true in our church as well. And then the other half has got small children for most of them. And those are things we have to think about. We have to think about the size of the crowd, the spacing requirements, the regulations, the sanitizing in between services. They're so, so we're in meetings about all that. I'm just telling you up front, don't be surprised if we come back and say we won't be able to meet too quickly. Uh, we're not going to outrun. We're not going to get ahead of what the government is telling us is the right thing to do. And no, I don't feel like my religious rights are being infringed upon at all. I feel like we're going to be doing the loving thing for all people. I, the people who show up first, I'll tell you, that would be the most vulnerable. The older folks are going to be here, and they're the ones most vulnerable. So I don't want to jeopardize them. Children, how do you take care of children? How do you make children social distance? And then we have the whole thing of taking care of infants and, and changing and all. There's so many things to consider. So I just want you to know. We're considering all these things, and we will come to some conclusion. I'm sure it will probably change along the way, um, but we're going to plan for the safety of all, even if that means it costs us a little bit more in time and resources. The last thing we want to do is do this all over again, and so we should do everything we can to make sure that doesn't happen. So for now, we'll continue online on Sunday mornings, 9.15. And if you can't get up by 9.15, it's on there the rest of the week. Check it out anytime you want. We'll continue with 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. Um, and on Wednesdays, we're, we may make a shift. We're having a meeting on that tomorrow. We're, we're going to try to give the most practical help we can. And we'll give you more information on that probably by the weekend. And speaking of the weekend, this weekend is now 50 days, will be 50 days after Easter Sunday, which means what? On the church calendar. What is this Sunday? It's Pentecost Sunday. I'm actually very excited about speaking about the Holy Spirit on this Sunday. The coming of the Holy Spirit, the birth of the church of Jesus Christ. The fulfillment of God's invitation to humanity into the fullness of the divine dance of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We'll talk about that this, this weekend. I hope you'll join us at 9.15. Now may the Lord bless you with hope. May God fill your heart with hope. May God fill your heart with hope that leads you to trust so that you can walk by faith and not by what you see and hear and feel in the natural. May the Spirit of God grace you tonight with patience. Patience to stand, patience to not waver, patience to wait. And may God bless you with the ability to focus and to help others focus on what they can do 
and just not worry about what you can't do yet. May God cause us all to grow through these trying times. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Spirit, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a great night.